Welcome back TCS TV viewers, it's Chris Nichols here from the camera store and today we're reviewing the Leica MD. Now this camera is certainly an attempt at a blast from the past. And you know what? It seems to be working because I feel like I've somehow traveled back in time today. So join me here on the review for the Leica MD. Now, as you can see from our location, we're not in Calgary City site, we're actually at Heritage Park. And this is an amazing place where you can see how we used to live back in the past. Lots of fantastic stuff to shoot today, and it's very fitting for a classically designed camera like the Leica MD. First off, we'd like to say a big thanks to Heritage Park for letting us shoot here and using this amazing location. Okay, so the Leica MD is nostalgic, but what does that really mean? I mean, this is a modern digital body, and yet what Leica has done here is something very, very interesting. First off, on the back, you'll notice that there's no LCD screen. In fact, there's no digital interface whatsoever. This camera is really trying to get us back to a different way of shooting, and there could be many reasons for that. Is this something that's trying to make a more purist experience for the photographer? Is this just a sales gimmick? Are they uh, giving you terrible value for money? Or is it all of those things at once? Now the first thing you're going to notice on the Leica MD that's so different is of course the complete lack of an LCD screen and any sort of interface. Instead it's been replaced by this ISO selector here. Now this is really nice because the classic film like is used to have a very similar pattern to remind you what film that you had in the camera. Well this will actually choose your ISOs from 200 to 6400. It's actually very, very slick and it works very well. And the first thing I want to talk about just off the bat is the Leica MD's looks. Now I'm going to go ahead and go on record and say that I've actually really never liked the digital Leicas. I've always thought they were bulky, ugly, poorly designed cameras, especially for the cost. They just didn't have the charm and the looks of the classic film bodies. I mean, the M6, I think, is still one of the most handsome cameras ever made. But what I am pleasantly surprised by in the Leica MD is with this simplicity, with this paring down of all the digital accoutrements, it's actually a very handsome, attractive camera. Nice in the hand, simple, total black face here just to try to keep things as discreet as possible and really does feel a lot like a classic camera. I find myself enjoying the aesthetics of this camera way more than the other digital bodies. All right, well, just like it would be in the past shooting film, I have no idea what I'm gonna get when I'm shooting these things without the screen. So I'll pretend it's a film camera. Let's go take some pictures right now. Beautiful, man. thank you very much. Funny, the simple ISO selector on the back seems like it should be a lot easier to use, but I still totally forgot that when I was doing the review and playing with it, it was a 6400 ISO. So we'll make those shots black and white. It'll look old timey time. It would be perfect for this video. So I'm just trying to get some handheld shots here. We're pushing the ISO to the top, 6400. And again, Leicas aren't going to give you the most impressive low light performance, but we've got the wide angle lens hand holding here. I'm at quarter of a second. And one thing I will say, I mean, I hope these photos are sharp. I can't check right now. But uh, I will say that the shutter is incredibly still. There's very little movement to it, and uh, the body's nice and heavy, so I'm pretty confident about the handhold capability on this camera. So I know this is a camera review, guys, as usual, but this is a very strange camera to review because, frankly, there's not a lot to it. All the exciting features are commonplace. They've been on the market for a long time, and if anything, like has taken features away. So what really occurs to me about this camera is more about how it makes me feel as a photographer and the experience behind it. And what occurs to me as well is that this Leica MD is many different cameras to different people. So one way that the Leica MD can be categorized is as a very pure shooting tool for a very skilled photographer. And I mean skilled as far as somebody who's got a lot of experience, they've been shooting a long time, they can already pre-visualize the shot. I mean, Leica shooters have already had to do this, and this really takes you back to your roots. 
Now for somebody who's maybe starting out, maybe they're a beginner with $8,000 or they want to challenge themselves, that could be another way to do it, then this could be a very interesting camera. The other person who might want to really shoot this camera is Nick Devlin. Yeah, I am one of those three people on the planet who would buy the Leica without the LCD. Exactly, so, so I'm nothing, the, right? I'm the wrong guy here. So lawyers will like it, and I think anybody who's just looking for that challenge, you know, they want to have as little between them and the photograph as possible, just the camera and the composition. There's something very beautiful about that, and if that's for you, this is a great camera to look at. So about the only thing that's still present from a modern Leica digital camera is the function button up here in the exposure comp. But again, very simple in its operation. The function button in conjunction with the dial will do your exposure compensation when you're in aperture priority. And if you tap through it, you are going to get to see some basic heads-up display stuff. In the viewfinder, you'll get to see your battery life and how many shots you have remaining. Now the other thing you're going to use this button for is when you want to change date and time and I do want to talk about that here a bit. Now of course we have no interface, there's no screen, so how do we do that kind of stuff? Well, you go into your self timer mode, you hold down this button for a really long time and then you get some numbers flashing. And I tried changing with the dial, it's supposed to set up your date and time, it makes absolutely no sense. If you do not have your manual with you, God help you trying to get the EXIF data to be appropriate for these files. You know, it's funny, in the store, as sales staff, we always talk about how we think cameras should be built, and it very often comes up that cameras should be made more simple, you know, get rid of all of the stuff, but now that I've actually got a camera like that in my hands and I'm using it, I don't know, there's things that I'm kind of missing or that I'm worried about, you know. The Leica MD, for example, doesn't shoot JPEG at all. That means there's no white balance control, it's automatic, you know, there's no color space choices, quality settings, nothing. This is strictly a DNG RAW camera, but you know, there's a lot of situations where I like using JPEGs, I'm going to miss that. You know, as well, you don't have any sort of auto ISO controls, uh, shooting speed is basically limited to three frames per second like all their cameras, or in single mode you could probably squeeze off about two per second but overall this camera is just totally bare and stripped down and I can see where they're going with that aesthetic and I can see why they're doing that I don't know if I like it yet though all right so I'm getting some shots of just who the train there the uh, classic wheat field here I love the composition but you know, one of the things about a Leica that you're going to have to get used to is the classic rangefinder focusing. I've never been a fan because, frankly, it's difficult and it's slow. Uh, you know, focusing on thousands of shafts of wheat with a rangefinder is very, very difficult, but it's a pure Leica, so I'm supposed to smell the compositions and feel the focus and just flow with the whole operation of the camera, so I'm going to attempt to do that next. So, so far I'm really enjoying the overall handling of the MD. It does have a heavy weight to it. It's got the brass top and bottom as they have on their more expensive camera models. And uh, overall the camera's working really well. I like the simple interface. Even the exposure comp and dial is working well. And the only complaint that I really have about it is I wish we did have an actual exposure comp dial. It would still keep a simple retro kind of feel. And I like being able to see where my exposure comp was last. Here I have to look through the viewfinder and then I actually have to hold the button and then turn the dial before I have any idea where I am in the compensation. So that's been annoying, but otherwise overall there's not much to complain about because it's so simple. You know, it's funny in our market today, all the other manufacturers are trying to make cameras that look vintage, but inside are still totally modern. But with Leica, you know, with the 262 to some extent, and especially with the MD, they're not holding anything back. They're just making these things as vintage as possible. And I do like that, except in one area. They have gone back with the 262 and this MD to a center weighted meter. Now, if you've used a 70s film camera your entire life and you have mastered it after years of mistakes and wasted rolls of film, then you're gonna love this camera, it's gonna be great. If you're anybody else on the planet doing photography, you're gonna find this very frustrating. You're gonna have a lot of great shots that are now just wasted. They're just totally underexposed. You can't see anything because there's some backlight. You know, the lighting in here is beautiful, but I'm getting it all over the place and you have to compensate all the time, especially with the fact that you can't check your photos here and make sure if there was a mistake or not, you're going to find that very frustrating. And frankly, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I would have liked to have seen a multi-segment meter in this camera, or at least the option to do so, just to make photography a little bit more fun for most people out there. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot.
this class of printing press was actually in use in Strathmore, according to Jordan, and his grandmother actually worked for that paper. So you've got a bit of family history right here at Heritage Park. So I'm sitting on my knees here taking a picture and an epiphany has just struck me here. You know, at the start of this shooting the MD, I was kind of feeling like I didn't have a lot of choices and I was feeling nervous and, you know, like I'm missing out. Why would they take away all these features? And uh, now that I'm using it, you know, I'm getting used to just changing the ISO really quickly, the exposure compensation, not worrying about other things like white balance and stuff. And uh, it's actually becoming a very enjoyable and simple kind of experience and I think I can see why Leica decided to do this and that there's some merit in it and just the the fact that I'm shooting like it's a film camera and I'm enjoying it and I'm starting to kind of just clear my mind of all the other stuff I have to worry about and yes it's going to mean a, some work in post but it actually is becoming a very enjoyable experience so there's something there they're not completely crazy. Now, looking at some of the shots I took earlier, this camera is actually performing fairly well in low light situations. You know, I can hand hold with a range finder, 15th of a second, but going below that, I am starting to get some blur. Quarter of a second, I just can't do it. Even though, to its credit, the weight and the shutter are helping out a lot. I would really like, especially because of the cost of these cameras, to see some sort of uh, sensor-based image stabilization. I think that would make so much sense on these Leica M bodies. Uh, I know their argument here can be that we don't want to do it because we want to make this pure as possible. And yes, there was lots of wonderfully classic and beautiful photos from the 40s, 50s, and 60s that were totally blurry. But uh, I can't think of many photographers now who wouldn't mind getting sharper photos. So I'm all for inbuilt stabilization. Leica, I think you should do it. So we've had a chance to sit down and take a look at the files and play with them. And again, no real surprises. I mean, this is the same kind of Maestro processing engine and 24 megapixel full frame sensor that Leica normally uses. So you're still getting that beautiful warmth in the files, that Leica look in the processing, which we love. And uh, as usual, highlights on this camera, pretty garbage. Shadows can recover very nicely, although you do get noise. It's all part of the character, but remember, you do not want to overexpose these files like I did at the start of this video because they just lose everything. Okay, so no matter what you think about having all of these features off of this camera losing it all, there is one big plus, and that is amazing battery life. Uh, I've been shooting this camera now all day long, four hours. I just touch the function button. I can see right in the viewfinder. I'm at 75%. So, you know, this whole idea of mirrorless cameras having terrible battery life, that's not true as long as you take out every single screen and electrical component and menu system possible in the camera. That's all it takes. All right, viewers, so we're going to wrap up our video here on a moving train, as you can see, might be a little bit noisy. But uh, I did have a lot of fun with the Leica MD today, and this can be many different cameras I've kept talking about. Is this an overpriced toy? Certainly, I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, I've always thought Leicas were hideously overpriced as it is, but we're not getting a break here in savings, and we're getting all of our features taken away. And I think Leica's going to get away with it, you know, because they're marketing it as a purist tool and that's what you're paying for you know but really we're just losing a whole bunch of stuff that you would get on a standard 262. can you take a 262 and turn it off into a classical mode and pretend that it doesn't have features sure you could so why are we paying for this now on the other hand you can look at the leica md as a very pure and simple tool something that makes your photography better something that challenges you to take better photos that you're going to make a lot of mistakes on and learn from, and there's a lot to be said for that. You know, I said it before, but the Leica MD puts as little as possible between me, the photographer in my mind, and the photograph that I want to achieve, and it's a wonderful experience shooting that way. Something that was actually a lot of fun. You know, one thing that was really interesting today, though, was just shooting the Leica MD. It was so classic. It brought me back to when I shot film. It was nostalgic. It was a, a, a time-traveling look into the heritage of cameras. And just for a cheesy segue while we're on it, we do want to thank Heritage Park again for having us out here in Linus Shoot. Honestly, the staff have been great. The locations have been beautiful to shoot. And if you're interested in photography, come down here, tour the grounds, take some shots. It is quite amazing. Oh, and on the topic of photos in Heritage Park, I should mention that they're actually running their Railways Days photo contest, and the camera store is going to judge the top prize. You get a $500 gift card, so it's definitely worth checking out. The theme's about working on the railroad, and if you visit heritagepark.ca, you'll have all the contest entry details that you're looking for, so definitely check that out. Overall, though, guys, tweet us, Instagram us, talk to us, subscribe to us, and please let us know your comments on this camera. Overpriced silly tool or pure uh, photographic bliss? 
Check us out, and again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys soon.